a very good evening to all of you uh, let me first begin with a big thanks to the PS it is a big honor for me to come and share this room and this platform to share the experience and it was a great learning experience for myself for the last two and a half days and uh, it is really a, a good occasion for me to come to this holy city and speak on some of the experiences of linking traditional knowledge and, uh, and uh, well-being with uh, the AI and technology. Uh, so uh, what I will do is that uh, I will speak about coupling technology with traditional knowledge and uh, well-being. I bring to you the greetings from my institute, which is located at the tri-junction of Karnataka, Maharashtra, and Goa in the foothills of the Western Ghats which is one of the biodiversity hotspots uh, in the country. A lot of tribal practices do happen in that particular region. And uh, I am actually, uh, I started as a microbiologist by education, a molecular epidemiologist uh, by training, and then ultimately I became a, a felicitator linking various aspects uh, of uh, health sciences together. So I nowadays cannot assign a particular role to me uh, in, in subjects, uh, subject wise. Uh, so uh, what I will do is that I will just brief you about the kind of work that uh, we do. Our institute works on integrative health. That is, it, in, it identifies promising leads from traditional knowledge and uses modern medicine and modern technologies to validate them for either use in public health or in integrative therapies. And we do it mostly for those conditions like lifestyle and metabolic disorders, for geriatric uh, diseases, neurodegenerative disorders, viral infections, where we do not have much of answer from the modern medicine systems. And uh, here we have to understand a couple of things. First is that the uh, traditional medicine actually is much broad and it includes what we call codified system and the non-codified system together. The codified system is a subset of the green uh, circle that you see. So that comprises, in Indian context, the Ayush systems, which include the Ayurveda, Yoga, Unani, Siddha, Homeopathy, Swarikpa. Uh, so these are all recognized forms of medicine, although traditional forms, but then in addition to that, there are so many other practices that happen actually in the communities who do not have any legal uh, standing, but they are practiced particularly in areas where access to healthcare is very poor. And the village healers or the faith healers and all, they are the people who, uh, to whom the uh, villagers normally would go with the first appearance of any signs and symptoms of disease. So what we try to do is that we understand the kind of conditions in which these are used, and then we try to employ modern methodologies and technologies to, to extract or see the best possible solutions and take them forward. Uh, so as we do, this is the validation cycle. We use uh, what we call as reverse pharmacology. Normally, we start with small hints, hint, hits, and then we go in the drug development mode. That is the normal classical drug discovery pathway. But here it is opposite. These are actually remedies that are used for centuries together. And they, they lack actually the evidence which the modern people fail to understand. So we try to develop those evidences which will be understood by all and it can be published and it can come in public domain which people can read them and understand how it works and for what purposes. So we have people, I have a very small team of 14 scientists. So we have clinicians at the, on the upper side, you can see the community and clinic side, where we have people from social sciences. Uh, one, one social scientist is there who is basically himself uh, from the tribal community. So they will go to the field, they will sit with the healers, they will understand them in their language, try to engage with them, then understand, take them on board and tell the purpose and why we are there and try to get extra the, the knowledge that they have, if they are willing to share with 
proper informed consent uh, and all the things that in place. And then we try to do a, a, a very rapid study uh, in, in seeing the kind of patients who are coming to them for what conditions and how they get benefited. And then those which actually have promise are taken into the laboratory side, which comes down. And we have an uh, ethnomedicine uh, specialist who is a qualified taxonomist. So he will identify the exact plants that are being used, any differences whatsoever. Sometimes different names are used even across India for the same plant, or different plants are used for the same name. So these are controversies that do happen. So taxonomist presence is absolutely necessary. Then we do chemistry, we do toxicology, safety. We do a lot of bioinformatics where the AI and other things will come which will mostly uh, lead us to development of methods for in vitro demonstration of their activities. We do the molecular biology, biotechnology if required, and then we do a preclinical safety and efficacy studies in animals, initially starting with zebrafish models, then smaller animals, and if required, higher, higher animals. And then it goes back to the, uh, the medical uh, scientists where they will be doing uh, the clinical trials. And once the clinical trials are over, then that completes the validation cycle. So, but what I will do today is that I will not speak on the kind of things that we do. I will try to restrict it to the use of traditional medicine and AI where they have actually combined together in a larger perspective uh, with special reference to those practiced in India. And uh, perhaps that will include about only 1% of the work that our institute does, but it will be useful to understand the, uh, the landscape of uh, integration of traditional medicine with artificial intelligence that is happening in our country. As we know, there are, there are several kinds, forms of traditional medicines practiced across the world, be it Ayurveda, Chinese traditional medicine, uh, Kempo, the uh, Native American uh, system, the uh, Greco-Roman uh, systems of medicine, Egyptian medicine. So they have evolved over the years. And similarly, we know the benefits of what artificial intelligence can do. Can do. And uh, this is one of the things for Ayurveda, which I would like to explain, is that Ayurveda is based on five elements of space, water, earth, fire, and air. And a combination of these elements result in three humors called doshas, which are divided into vata, kapha, and pitta. So these are the three conditions or constitu constituents of one person. There will be different levels of those forces in one, one person, and there, the imbalance of that causes disease. So Ayurveda tries to correct those imbalances and make it balanced. For that, unlike modern medicine where uh, age and gender match we take as one unit in randomized clinical trial, Ayurveda does not consider, or the traditional system does not consider that. It is more personalized. So you need to identify the constitution of that particular person, which comes with facial expression, your likes, dislikes, your height, weight, age. So those are given as inputs in now smartphones, which will take your photograph, and it will give you the, uh, your prakriti or your constitution. And that helps the physicians to guide the treatment. So that has come now, and there are publications as well on these this kind of uh, things, which are widely gaining acceptance nowadays. In clinical applications, on the, on the right side corner, you can see this is called a Nadi Tarangini. So here, these are all gadgets, actually, which measures the pulse, and even the frequency of beads, the intensity, and all, and the diagnosis based on the traditional systems or traditional knowledge is actually translated into, uh, into digital forms, and then the treatments are determined. Other than that, we have softwares which actually guide the traditional practitioners, including those from the Ayush disciplines. Uh, one such is called Ayusoft. Another new one has come, uh, uh, which actually employs uh, artificial intelligence in giving its clinical treatments. So there are several new ones that are uh, coming uh, every every year. Then telemedicine. Uh, uh, my predecessor was just uh, talking about the access. So now there are chatbots which are coming with the traditional systems, the AI chatbots, which can actually take 
the benefits of traditional medicines to the people who do not have access or doctors are sometimes not available because of their busy schedules, so you can actually take uh, chatbots into consideration for treatments. As I said, the Ayurveda particularly depends on Vata, Pitta, and Kapha. Now there are extremely, extremely uh, good studies that are being done on Ayur genomics. They are linking the SNPs and the genetic traits with the Prakriti or the traditional concept and modern genetics. So this has been started in 2002 and this is an ongoing process and a lot of data has been generated and we expect that the results will be very much useful in giving personalized medicine to uh, the individual patients. Uh, another study which is being done across various uh, hospitals having Ayurveda, Siddha, Unani, and other forms of uh, traditional treatments is analyzing retrospective data using AI. The case records, forms, whichever are there, they are actually read by AI, and then these records are translated, and it is actually very cost-effective, and we know for which kind of diseases, which kind of uh, treatments are actually helpful. So based on big hospitals, so this kind of data is being extracted by AI, which will be very useful. In our institute, we have a directory of traditional medicine practitioners. Every two years, we have a traditional healers meet, just like the one you had here in this uh, academy. Uh, we are doing it for the last 10 years, and we try to understand the perspectives of the traditional healer and how best we can uh, work together to take their knowledge for the benefit of mankind and to give access to the people who actually need it, mostly the marginalized and those who have less access to healthcare. And this also serves as the as a raw material for us uh, to actually uh, do further research. We have uh, um, we have uh, made a database of uh, ethnomedicinal plants of Western Ghats containing more than 500 plants and a lot of um, 200 odd diseases and with the original names as well. So this is a freely available resource. Uh, uh, you can just type that NITM medplantsdb.in and you will get the complete details about these plants, how they are used for, what part, parts are used for what conditions. And this can be a very good source for researchers to take up further research and validate the use of these particular plants for the benefit of uh, mankind. Uh, similarly, we have uh, traditional knowledge digital library. This does not belong to ICMR, but it belongs to the CSIR, which is again another government institution, where it is not only the health aspect, but also other traditional knowledge also is documented. This is, however, not free to access by everybody, but you can write to them and they will give the info information. Similarly, we have several databases across the world. We have our Nubbe database from Brazil, the uh, TCM database of Taiwan, uh, the UNPD, which we use, there are databases of bioactives, uh, there are databases of the chemistry, uh, again, UNPD, ChemBL, we we're talking in the morning, uh, the drug bank, target databases, the disease targets that are there that can be identified, and uh, docking studies can be done in computer, the PDB, again, we were talking in the morning, the protein databases. So we know even the constituents that are available in these particular plants and all these, including the structures, are now being made available. And AI is actually helping them all integrate together in a better way. Then there are disease target association databases, like therapeutic uh, target databases, the human protein atlas database. And this is how a network pharmacology looks like. This is actually uh, reactions that happen inside the cell. So you just can't read it. So once you add one drug there, a complete set of reactions will change. So it is not always one disease, one uh, medication, no. There might be something else that can happen. So we need to look into this aspect as well. So what we do is that we do molecular simulation on these kind of uh, the plants that are used for specific diseases, and we do computational studies and try to understand which are the molecules that are actually working, and then we do validate them in, in, in silico, after that in vitro, and then in vivo in animal models, and then clinical trials. So we call this concept as herbal informatics, 
the use of uh, informatics, information sciences and technology to validate the traditional medicine plants, and then we come up with uh, various uh, solutions to it. So we have done this for, uh, we have certain leads in viral hepatitis, we have some leads in uh, the management of uh, COVID as well, and these have been patented as well. And uh, recently we have come up with this database on herb drug interaction. People do not know that most of the herbs that we take also are likely to interact with uh, the drugs that you may be taking, particularly diabetic people, those who are with arthritis, they will also take something which is available on Amazon or they can uh, take something uh, over the counter uh, drugs and then they also sometimes do affect. So we are making a kind of a uh, software which can actually tell the clinicians as well as the patients that this is likely to happen. Some are even predictive, not only based on literature, but can be predictive. And whenever we do all this, we follow the ethical guidelines for the application of artificial intelligence and biomedical science, again by ICMR. And uh, uh, so I will, I will end with a thank you slide. So yesterday's uh, presentation on evolution uh, inspired me to change my thank you slide. And this is a six abstract uh, story of the evolution of medicine. So we started with the stars and moons and all the astrobiologists and all who are here. Uh, so the health was determined by that and with the beliefs. And then came the material sciences, uh, an age of material science. Then came the digital health, both for diagnosis as well for treatment. And then came personalized medication. You are linking with your social security number and all those kind of things where you get access. And then my favorite is the change from genotype, the Mendelian genetics of yes, no, uh, to ATGC, and then from ATGC to 0101 computation, computation, computational or characterization by computers. And then the last one, which uh, Dr. Dem Demis was uh, telling there day before yesterday, if we have something wearable and you add some kind of uh, AI to your glasses and then you use your brain, so perhaps that is where we are going into. So which shows your brain on one side and the chip on the other. Thank you, and once again, I thank you for this opportunity.